So to bring this all home, let's examine a model of carbon atoms. So typically it's going to consist of six protons, six electrons, and six neutrons. That is what we're observing right here. So we have our six protons and neutrons right here in the middle. And then we have our six electrons floating around on the outside in our rings. And as we discussed before, each shell is going to correspond to a distinct energy level and is going to have a maximum capacity of electrons depending on the number of the shell. So carbon has an atomic number of six, which means we have six electrons. So we need to have some place to place those six electrons on the outside of our carbon. So our first shell, which is our S shell, our first ring here, our S subshell, I should say, is going to have two electrons within that subshell because that S can only hold a maximum of two. And that's the only subshell that we have in the first energy level of our shell or our ring. So with our second shell, ring or energy level, whatever you wanna call it, we have an additional four electrons that we have to place someplace else. We know that based on that second level, that second shell, we can place a maximum of eight electrons. So we're doing good. We know that the first S of our second layer subshell is going to hold a maximum of two electrons and then we only have two left those are immediately going to go into the p subshell of our energy level so this is what a carbon atom would look like and how many shells that they would have as well as subshells so